Both common to the Jewish belief and the Christian belief is that the life that we know when we die we will be resurrected and there's what we call salvation. The Jews believe that the salvation is based upon their obedience to the law. Christians believe it's based upon belief in Jesus as Christ. What is the basis for the Muslim belief in salvation? Uh, if what you said is correct, that the Christian belief is in believing Jesus as the Christ, we have the salvation because we believe that Jesus is the Christ. We believe that. But no, I think you fail to say that you believe that he died for your sins, that he paid the price. Your salvation is God through the blood of Christ, that he paid the supreme sacrifice with his life. I think that is what you had in mind. Now, that topic... The subject, while I was reading the index, if you remember, I said, Christ Jesus not crucified is another topic. I've had debates with Christian you know, evangelists, Americans, evangelists on this topic, like a Floyd, Professor Floyd e. Clark from Johnson Bible College. I had a debate with him in, uh, uh, in, in, in the Royal Albert Hall, London, last year. I had another Professor Simpkins, you know, also an American, he came to South Africa, we debated with him, was Christ crucified, as well as is Jesus God? How about the crucifixion? So we say Jesus Christ was not killed, nor was he crucified. This was a subject of debate last night with Dr. Robert Douglas of the Zwemer Institute. He's a director of the Zwemer Institute, a missionary organization in this country. I had a debate with him last night. And I think the tape as well as the videotapes are available, you can, you can avail yourself of those. How does the Muslim get salvation? You see, to Muslim there's only one way. And the way is for all eternity the same. There is no change. God is not the author of confusion. He wouldn't tell Moses something and he gives something contradictory to Jesus and again something to contradict him to Muhammad. If it is all coming from the same source, the message must be the same. His law is eternal and it is not changeable. He doesn't change his laws by the minutes. He fails one system, then he introduces another system. That is not my God. He doesn't fail with this system. He gave to Moses and to the children of Israel a law. The law was that as you sow, so you will reap. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, we are given that in a nutshell, which is truly Islamic. It says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And the Christian puts a full stop. All his literature, his evangelical literature, he stops there, puts a full stop where there's no full stop. He says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Father Adam, he sinned. We, his children, are not responsible for what he did. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. His sons today, in Los Angeles, last June, this previous June, 300,000 sodomites, whom you call gays, they gathered in San Francisco on a pilgrimage led by 50 lesbians on motorcycles. Here in San Francisco in your country, God Almighty will not ask Adam, say, hey, look at your children, this rubbish. What have you produced? No, God will not ask him. He's not responsible. He says, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Whatever good thing the good man does, he gets his reward. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Whatever the evil monger does, sinner does, he gets his punishment. Salvation. How do you get salvation? It continues. The verse continues. But if the wicked will turn, means repent, from all the sins that he has committed, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Spiritually. Physically, we all die. The good and the bad. The sinner and the saint. We all die. But this die means... Spiritually, you will not be destroyed. You will live forever. That is salvation. You repent of your evil, do that which is lawful and right. Whatever God told you to do, you do. Heaven is for you. Solomon the wise, he tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes, advising his son and through him advising us. He says, and further, by this my son be admonished. Learn a lesson from this. 
of making many books, there is no end. All your excuses for not doing the job, not doing the work, not obeying God. There's no end to your excuses. Of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. You know, you say, I'm going to study Buddhism, I'm going to study Taoism, I'm going to study Judaism, I'm going to study Islamism, and I will come to a conclusion. He says, you'll get tired. He says, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. He says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter in a nutshell. Let's get the message. He says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That's all. Fear God and keep his commandments. That is salvation. Jesus Christ told you the same. He says, very, verily I say unto you, most certainly I'm telling you this. Except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There is no heaven for you unless you are better than the Jew. Except it exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. He said again, think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am come not to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, most certainly I am telling you, heaven and earth shall pass away, but one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Tittle, jot, jot is the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Not even that amount is to go out of the law of God. So one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, least commandments, or shall teach men so, shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall teach and do, shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I say, we teach and we do. I ask you, do you keep the laws and the commandments? You say, no. I say, why not? He says, the law is nailed to the cross. Why not? He says, we are living under grace. That's what the Christian said. You're living under grace. I say, where did you get this? This idea. That the law is nailed to the cross. is done away with. Where did you get it? So he quotes me. Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, Thessalonians, Colossians. And so who's this? Who's this? Timothy, Romans. Who's all this? What's this? Who is that? It's a Paul, 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 Paul. I said, who is your master? You say, Jesus. What does he say? You're contradicting Jesus. And Jesus said, the disciple is not greater than the master. Master is Jesus. What he tells you, I say, I listen to my master, Jesus. He never had the pig. He, none of his disciples ever touched that pork. You call it pork, ham, bacon, whatever you call it. He never touched that stuff. None of his disciples ever touched it. And you are all pig eaters. Christians. Where did you get this? He said, Peter had a dream. On that dream, now you eat pigs. When my master never had it, he wouldn't eat it. It was abhorrent to him. He killed 2,000 pigs. One hit. He destroyed them all. You know that? But now you don't listen to him. You are now living in the grace. I said, are you circumcised? He says, no. I said, why aren't you? This is a major commandment. God gave. Your Lord was Christ. Jesus Christ was circumcised. I said, what is good for your God should be good for you. No, you won't circumcise. Why won't you? This is the law of God. He entered into between Abraham and his descendants forever. And you claim to be spiritual descendants. How does that absolve you? It is Jesus was circumcised and you are not. He said, no. He says, Paul said, circumcision, circumcision is nothing and non-circumcision is nothing. I said, Jesus says, not even one jot or one tittle is to pass from the law. Can't you see? Guys, yes, I, I, I remember checking out that verse where Paul said, circumcision is nothing and those who circumcise or who did not circumcise is... He was not saying it. If you read that verse correctly, I really know he was not saying it to like say... Don't get circumcised. He was saying it like for you to be circumcised and for you not to be circumcised, it does not mean you will not go to heaven. That was the message he was trying to pass down to people. Like when people wanted to get circumcised as they were old enough, like you no, know, I, I believe most Christians, I won't say most Christians though. I believe those people not being circumcised kind of deal with their culture because I really don't know any Christian. Yes, I we say I don't know any Christian who is uncircumcised. But well, circumcision is from birth. Yes. Like it was during this videos I kind of knew that some Christians were not circumcised. It's strange and I don't know why but it's strange. Okay, let's get back into this. 
you are not following Jesus. You're following Paul, Paul, Paul. He is the real founder of Christianity. Paul, not Jesus. Therefore, your great countryman, Michael H. Hart, he wrote a book on the top 100, the greatest 100 in history, the most influential 100 people from Adam to current time. And he gives us a list, the 100, the top 100, or the greatest 100 in history. Michael H. Hart, New York, of the Hart Publishing Company. And in that list of the most influential men, after giving the list of 100 names, he puts them in the order of seniority. Number one, number five, number 50, number 99, who, who, who? And he puts Muhammad number one. The most influential man in history, according to Michael, Michael S. Hart, an American, in America, publishing a book of 572 pages, retailing about 10 years ago for $15, which I paid for it. Maybe it cost 50 today, I don't know. He says, Muhammad is the most influential man in history. And his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, number three. His God and Savior, number three. And he gives reasons. Not because some Arab bribed him. So here's 10,000 for you. Say a good word about Muhammad. Put him number one. You give 100,000, put him number one in your book. No, no Arabs could ever think of that. It's possible, but not probable for an Arab to do that. Why does he put Jesus Christ as God and Savior number three? He said, you see, the honor for Christianity is to be shared between Paul and Jesus. Actually, Paul is the real founder of Christianity. This is Follow Jesus, listen to him, you can't help being a Muslim. You'll be a Muslim through and through. But you don't want to listen to Jesus. Read the books. Listen to the sermons. It's Paul, 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 not Jesus. What did Jesus say? He says, he is not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. But the cowards that we are, we are not prepared to pick up the cross. Guys, he said if we listen to Jesus, you can't help being a Muslim. And uh, there are some questions I've asked myself and I've asked people on this channel. Jesus said some things that some Muslims just ignore and Jesus said he's going to die and a lot of people ignore that fact that Jesus said he is going to die and read me that people don't just talk about it and I still don't see the reason why because if you want to be plain and know where the fault is I think we should talk about everything. Apparently that one said Jesus said he's going to be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. For two days actually and jesus actually died because jesus said his miracle is going to be that of jonah who stayed in the sea monster or fish for two days so jesus said he's going to be in the heart for three the heart of the earth and jesus was actually in the heart of the earth because if his skill was made of heart of the earth it means that jesus said he's going to die for three days so how explain give me a logical reason why just give me a logical reason that says jesus did not die like I feel Jesus dying is is a very very strong evidence that has been passed on from generation to generation. Like you just can't ignore that fact. Yeah, I feel like they are trying so hard to ignore the fact that Jesus actually died. It's more like I don't know, some people believe that maybe he didn't die or something like that. But he actually did. And then him talking about Paul and Jesus. But well, that's true, but I probably influenced Paul, Christianity. Yes, Paul influenced Christianity. That was after his life was changed. You understand? It was like he took Christianity to another level, bringing and spreading the word. So you, I, I don't really see that. I don't really think someone can be persecuted. Because he was persecuting people and Jesus came to him and he was being persecuted. So I, I don't really think he he just want to have fun being it's, persecuted. It's like, it does not make sense. It's not fun being persecuted because he knows like it's like at that point I felt like he realized that he was the same pain people passed through while he was persecuting them. He was passing through the same pain. Yeah. And now he has a reason to actually pass through that pain because he's seen the light already. Yeah. You guys are waiting about this video. Don't shoot the correct if you think we're wrong and leave your thoughts in the comments section guys. We'll see you next time guys.